Hamadorite is a feldspar and uh, it is characterized essentially by the labradorescence. And that is a Schiller effect that means flashes of light. And uh, generally speaking, Labradorite has purple, blue, and green uh, Schillers. But uh, there is a variety of Labradorite that's called Spectrolite that can be found in Finland uh, that also uh, shines with dark red, orange, blue, yellow, and green. Like this one, for example, is a Spectrolite. But what we are going to do today will be just a plain old Labradorite with a blue Schiller. Uh, the thing is that when you look at it, it looks pretty drab. It rarely forms crystals. Uh, the main thing we'll have to do is to recreate the base stone, the one that looks fairly drab. And it is fairly translucent, so this is what we are going to try and create. That translucency can be gray, it can be white, sometimes it's light blue or light green, sometimes it's a pale orange red, even black, as you can see it has some streaks of black. So, uh, can I create it? Absolutely, and with a fairly decent, uh, realistic effect and look. So, yeah, that is a primo clay. And as you can see, it does look drab until you start moving it and then you get the blue Schiller effect, the labradorescence. So, are you ready? Because I'm telling you, it will be fairly easy to make it. Let's go! First, we are going to need some piñata inks, and that will be forest green and uh, Havana brown to start with. And then we'll need some alcohol and a paintbrush. And I apologize for the brief stops, but apparently my recording software got updated, and since it got updated, it does those tiny stops. I don't know. I might have to uninstall it and reinstall it. Anyway, so get some drops of your uh, two colors and then spray some alcohol on them and then make a mess. Yeah, see, exactly like that. And spread the mess with your paintbrush. It doesn't really matter if you leave some uh, streaks, it's fine because it will not be seen in the final result. Then wipe some of that mess as much as you can with a paper towel. You can uh, even spray some more alcohol uh, if you can lift a little bit more of that ink. But your uh, intention is to get some of that ink to penetrate some of the clay. And yes, your clay will have to be very well conditioned because if you didn't know, I'll tell you now, alcohol ink dries the clay. So, once it is all nice and dry, we are going to stack it. And that is, we are going to cut it into pieces about one inch. And it's up to you how big you want to make the stack. But I will do about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. And you don't have to be super precise. Uh, all you need to do is to get some squarish pieces and then stack them and try not to stack the same colors one on top of the other yeah i promise you that it's only in the first few minutes of the video that is going to do this because i don't know after that it kind of came back it still did a couple times that stopping thing but then it was okay anyway so once you do your stack you want to flatten it and you'll see as you flatten it that the very very top thin thin layer that had the alcohol ink on it will start cracking and that is exactly what you want because it's going to give it an extra effect of stone now uh, labradorite doesn't form crystals i think i already said that did i huh i don't know anyway i'm saying it again if i already said that so it doesn't really form crystals very rarely generally it looks pretty glossy so we are going to try and recreate this so when you flattened your uh, sheet that uh, it can go through the pasta machine on the thicker setting you go with it through the pasta machine on the thicker setting obviously and then you cut it into several strips again i went for about an inch an inch and a quarter and then i'm going first to place a little bit more of that havana brown that i'm going to smear 
I'm going to use also some alcohol ink to uh, some alcohol to dilute my ink so it can be smeared better smeared and then initially I thought I was going to put some green but then I made up my mind that no it has enough green already and I want to go more for a grayish look not for a greenish look but the combination of that forest green because that was forest green remember my camera sometimes shifts the blues so yeah I put just a little dot of green that's insignificant and then I'm going to take some Mantilla black alcohol ink and I'm going to put it in a little cup and I will add a tad of alcohol to dilute it and then I'm going to smear it just you know randomly don't cover the whole sheet you don't want the whole sheet because you are going to uh, imitate those blackish lines fractures with this smearing and you don't want it to be pure black you want it you saw how even the black when we looked in the light even the black had some translucence to it so uh, this is what we are going to try and imitate so just smear some black on those sheets and then wait for it to dry here i waited to dry it's just that i cut and edited it, those are not wet and then stack it again yes we stack it again now the thing is that you make your cabochons with the crosswise section of this stack so again when you stack try not to repeat uh, the those smears in the exact same spots you will have to in some places but it's okay try not to put more than two or three at the same time and first um make sure that you have a fairly tall because you want those stripes those slices to be fairly thin why i didn't make the clay already thin because i needed it to to crack when i put the alcohol ink if it would have been already thin there wouldn't have been a need to thin it out so it wouldn't have cracked so once you got them thin enough and you want those the the area of translucent between the lines to be about half a millimeter at most then i'm going to cut the ragged edges and we are going to use those ragged edges don't throw them don't put them in your scrap clay just put them aside for now and then i'm going to cut pieces to form my cabochons and as you can see i'm going to form the cabochons from crosswise slices because you want those lines to appear and uh, i am cutting enough pieces for several cabochons now there's a, a thing you have to be very aware that what you are putting in the cabochon mold what is the back of the cabochon mold will be the front of your final cabochon uh, when you are placing the cabochons in the molds, try to disturb as little as possible the lines. They can, you can move them a little bit, but try to get a few that are still straight. Then make your cabochons, whichever cabochons you decide to make. And yeah, this one doesn't have designer cabochons, you'll have to use molds, unfortunately. So we'll all use molds but you can see i am using just the plain sculpey cabochon mold and then some best flexible molds and you will find uh, links in the video description for everything i promise you because you can find these at poly clay play but i also have put some in my amazon influencer store if you're outside of the us then what i'm doing i'm going to use some art alchemy opal magic line acrylic paints and this is the yellow blue what is special about these acrylic paints is that they are fairly transparent and especially this yellow blue don't try this with the other colors because they are not transparent enough and they have pigment also uh, i know that you're familiar from my videos with the opal magic line of waxes there is an opal magic line of acrylic paints and there is an opal magic line of mica powders 
and we are going to use also the mica powder and uh, as I said in this case more is less don't put too much acrylic paint and don't put too much mica powder the mica powder I'm using is called blue opal magic obviously <laughs> because I'm going to use uh, to make a faux labradorite with a blue shiller effect with blue flashes and after I place the mica powder, I'm going to put a little bit more of the Opal Magic um, yellow-blue acrylic paint on top of the mica powder, and just to fix the mica powder well in there. And then uh, remember those ends that I cut, the ragged ends? Those you place through the pasta machine on thinner and thinner setting, but uh, run them through the pasta machine in the length of the lines you want to uh, you don't want to widen the, those lines you have and go with them as thin as you can get it on your pasta machine before it starts shredding if it shreds a lot uh, if you look in one of my latest clay with me Sundays I showed how to what to use in order not to get your very thin clay shredded by the pasta machine and then place those uh, very very thin sheets of uh, lined clay on top of the what used to be the back of your cabochon that you have smeared all over with acrylic opal magic yellow blue paint and some opal magic blue opal mica powder then uh, go with the um, roller over them and because the main thing you need to be very careful about is not to trap air because if you trap air it's going to ruin your whole cabochon once you are sure that there is no air trap no nothing then you are pretty much ready to make your final cabochons and you simply turn the cabochon upside down and you put it in with that thin sheet first and then the other thing that you need to be very careful about when you pull out the cabochon because the clay had had a lot of alcohol ink it might have the tendency to cracking and you will see that this exact cabochon will have some cracks and I will show you how to fix it I'm not going to stop right now but you see the tiny cracks so yeah that is the only thing that you need to pay attention even if uh, generally speaking in a cabochon you might have some uh, little cracks like that that is normal for a stone for a mineral but uh, let's just fix ours okay so once you are done with all your cabochons making all your cabochons and then you fix all your cracks of course and you can see that I am paying a lot of attention to place very well that uh, middle of the cabochon where the sheet is right in the middle of the cabochon mold that is very important because you don't want your cabochon to start shifting left and right because you will ruin the uh, blue flash effect okay let's fix those little cracks it's very simple just uh, push the cabochon from the edges inside roll with it uh, with a roller over it and then put it back in the mold and voila it's all fixed <music> let's see what we did now I have to warn you it is a very I mean very a fairly uh, decent realistic uh, result but the problem is that my best blue labradorite is one of those exceptional quality stones so the blue is too awesome <laughs> but you will see that the the fall labradorite looks pretty good 
Uh, now you are witnessing me trying to hold everything without dropping anything. <laughs> but anyway, this is the comparison to a real ra Labradorite and the full Labradorite. You can see that we have those black line fractures that um, the flash appears and disappears. So we got the Schiller effect. And um, the blue is very close to the natural Labradorite, Labrador essence, Schiller, blue, flash. Yeah, I, I will do maybe later some with the other colors of Schiller's. And I have to tell you that I wanted to put on YouTube as public a very easy technique so uh, people will not have a lot of issues uh, making it. Yes, I do have other techniques uh, of which one will be uh, for my sponsors and of course will be for sale in the store later. But I am sure that you can enjoy this one very much. As you can see, the stone is all drab when the angle is not correct to show the uh, flash. And then as you move it, the flash appears and then disappears again when you move it away in a different angle. So, enjoy making your full Labradorite and happy clean!